because uh, the qualities the verse mentions uh -huh. fit no one else except Muhammad, can historically you, speaking. Can you show me? Um, okay. When it says that I will raise you a prophet from your brethren, yep. okay, um, the term brethren can refer to Israelites and non-Israelites, in particular the Arabs, okay. because the same term in the Bible refers to idiomites. Well, idiomites. Are you aware of that? Yeah, yeah. Well, it does talk about idiomites. Um, and they were Arabs. Yeah, but um, number one, have you got evidence that Muhammad's claim to descend from Ishmael is is a genuine claim? Have you got evidence? Yes, to absolutely, that? absolutely. What's your, what's your evidence? Um, firstly, to prove my argument. Muhammad doesn't have to be a descendant of Ishmael. Are you aware okay. of that? Right. So who are you saying he's a... Uh, uh, he's, he's, he's an Arabian prophet. Yeah. So just, right. to, just to respond to your point, oh, I don't have to prove to you that Muhammad was a direct descendant of Ishmael. He was. I will prove that to you. Okay. But I'm just simply giving you a side point that I don't even have to prove to you that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a direct descendant of Ishmael. I don't have to. Okay. Uh, because the Bible... Uh, doesn't put that condition no, okay but, but it does say brethren and the, the context seems to be quite clear when it says brethren. well he was an Arab Muhammad was Israel. Muhammad was definitely an Arab whether he was yeah. a descendant of Ishmael or not uh, can be uh, addressed sorry I hate this rain it's um, very distracting well uh, we call it the mercy of God <laughs> <laughs> when we don't have it we, yeah, we're, we're praying for it yeah. and you're from Australia, from Australia. recently you know yeah, yeah. people were praying for rain and yeah, you know most Caleb by the way uh, Nice to meet you. Uh, what is it, Adnan? Adnan, yes, Adnan. Adnan. And recently, you know, Muslims came out to pray for rain, uh, okay. so that, so that, okay. yeah, and 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 uh, it was a good human endeavor. Why don't we read the verse? Yeah. And then talk about. It. Absolutely. So I why mean, don't I start um, uh, verse fourteen to. Actually, I don't even have written down. Let me get the before you read, I mean, I want to quickly highlight something that we don't read biblical verses in isolation. What we do is we read them in in light of other biblical uh, verses. Uh, so we'll read the Bible or we try to read the Bible holistically, although Bible is patchwork. Uh, even biblical scholars have repeatedly highlighted. Well, the, uh, the text of Christians is another issue. What, what, the passage that I quoted from the Quran okay. uh, was in what they have the, of the Torah and the Gospel. I understand. The question I am trying to address is, can we read the Bible as a uniform text from Genesis to Revelation? No. None of the Christian scholars, none of the Jewish scholars ever claim that. You have what to read you mean by a unified text? Uh, because the, the uh, Bible currently as it is is patchwork. Verses have been put verses have been put together uh, by different people in different places at different times, right? And this is very, very clear yeah, as think, far as... I think we're talking about a different topic. Yes, here. you're right. Well, you're right, but that topic is directly relevant to the prophecies not, we're not discussing. Not really, because what I'm trying to say is that um, in Surah 7, 157, in Surah 7, 157, it says that you will find written in the, uh, described in the Torah and the Gospel, uh, yes. the, the unlettered prophet. Yes. Right? Yes. And a lot of Muslims point to Deuteronomy 18. No. We and it point says to other... in what they have of the Torah and the Gospel. We, we point to other passages as well. But, so but, when... Yeah, but you do point to Deuteronomy 18. We do. It's, right? it's one of them. So my yes. point is, is that yeah. uh, if we take that, then we look at that passage, you know, especially starting at verse 14 and 15. What is the evidence there that that's talking about Muhammad? And I wanted to read read the passage. Out. It doesn't mention Muhammad. It, it does not. Yeah, it it does not mention Muhammad. Him. It gives you it gives you uh, uh, ideas. It points to the direction of a it? prophet. Yeah, a prophet coming. Why and, don't I read and, it? and and wait, uh, so so that we have a fruitful discussion very quickly. You you uh, you can read it. Why are we saying that Deuteronomy eighteen eighteen? It's still unfulfilled as late as the period of Jesus, when yeah. Jesus was I don't walking. I think it there. is unfulfilled. Okay, that's something we can talk about. Yeah. Uh, okay, if it was fulfilled, who was it fulfilled in? Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're saying Deuteronomy 18, 18 is. I mean, is, I'm just going to say it was Paul then, Muhammad. Okay. Right? Now that's the point we, we need to address. Instead of going into long. Uh, but we need, to read, the we need to read the passage first. Yes. Right? Okay. Go okay, ahead. Go read, ahead. Right? Fair, that's fair enough. Go ahead. Read the passage. I'm reading and from can, the NIV, right? But I will, instead of saying fellow Israelites, I'll say brethren, right? If, if it's not too troublesome, can we get can we get an umbrella? <laughs> you, 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 okay, thank you. Okay. So. Yeah. No, this is better. Verse 15. 
of chapter 18 of Deuteronomy. The okay. Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites or from your brethren. Okay, Okay. this translation, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll say from brethren. Is right? that in brackets? No. no. From, this is NIV. From your, NIV, which is very theologically, very much theologically driven. I don't I know if you... I think it's a good translation. But... No, it's a good translation. I, I agree with that. But, but, but you know, that, that term Israelites... I'm just happy to say brethren for you. I'll say brethren. Oh, what? so when you, why brethren. did you say fellow Israelites? Because it says it here. But I'll just but say it's brethren. Not, it's not in the Hebrew. Sake, I'll say brethren. Yeah, I agree. The Hebrew is brethren. So, so, I think so, the meaning so, is fellow Israelites. That's why it's translated okay. that way. What, what I'm trying to highlight is you, yeah, just read, you just read something which is not in the Hebrew text. Do we agree? No, I think that is in the Hebrew text. I think it is saying fellow From Israelites. Israel. Yeah, it is saying fellow Israelites. No, it's not When there. it says brethren in that context, the no, meaning no, no, no. is fellow no, no, no. Israelites. That, we can debate the, that point. Wait, the we word, can debate that point. The, the, word, the words fellow Israelites is missing completely from the Hebrew text. It from says, all manuscripts. It says brethren, but the context of yes. brethren is no, fellow this Israelites. Is, this is something you're imposing on it. No, this is something because that Because brethren really is annoying. a very general term, uh, which we, we, we can talk about. It can mean Israelites, no doubt. Let's it can go, mean Israelites. Let me change it it to can King also James mean non-Israelites. Oh, well, how will King James sort you? Will that be any good for you? Oh, let me read it, King James. Right? No, but why don't we go to Hebrew? Isn't that well, better? Well, we know the word is brethren. Exactly. I, okay. I, I have no now, problems with that. Now, now, the issue is... But we haven't read the passage. Let's, leave, let's yeah. read the passage. No, because uh, if you're going to read something which is not in Hebrew, I, I will have to okay, highlight that's that. Fine. Okay, yeah, we'll okay, yeah. The, the Lord, which is Yahweh in Hebrew, right, capital, thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him you shall hearken, according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of Yahweh, my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. And when the Lord said this, and when the Lord said unto me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken, I will raise up for them a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So, the first so, thing I wanted to point out here is that it says there has to be a prophet like Moses. Oh, good, good. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we agree. So, so, so here, in the context, let's, what let's that agree. Mean? Let's agree first. Uh, the term is brethren, not Israelites. Yes. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. And a prophet who will come in the future will be a prophet like Moses. Yeah. But okay. There's a context to it, though. All right. What's the context? The context is verse uh, 15. Okay. Which where is what? It says. Read it. Uh, uh, sorry, verse 16. According to all that you desired of the Lord your God. Yeah. In Horeb, the day of the assembly, saying, "Let me not hear mm. the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not." So the context is they. When they went to the Mount Horeb, God spoke out of uh, out of the fire to the people, but they didn't want to hear anymore. Okay. And so they wanted Moses to speak to God and then bring the message to them sure. from God. That's sure. the context here. So that's amazing. That fits well into well, Ma the the profile of Muhammad. So we so will let's see just how. Clarify. Yeah. So Moses, in other passages in Numbers, it says that Moses would go and speak. Thank you. Oh, sorry. sorry. So I took the other one. <laughs> Moses would go and speak to God. Yeah. God would appear to him. He'd appear to him in the burning bush. He'd appear to him in a pillar okay. of cloud. Okay. He would speak to him. He would give him the commands, and then he would take that command okay. and give it to the people. Okay. That is how Moses. My, would do my it understanding. Forever. That's what it means to be like Moses. That there's nothing else in the context. That's what all it says about what it means to be like Th Moses. Thank you for that. Um, I understand uh, your 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 concerns about this. How we understand this particular verse and verses around this verse is that not every single aspect of uh, Moses' life has to be fulfilled in this coming prophet. For example... Yeah, it's just that he, one point. Uh, okay, there are, there are a few things that are very similar to Moses in Muhammad and those things cannot be found in Jesus. Yeah, Let me explain. Let yeah, me explain. But this, all this is saying is that like Moses, all, yes. it, all it means. So l l how, let's see how thing. Moses, how, how Muhammad was like Moses. Let's talk about that, that. Yeah, but that's irrelevant. Let's say he was 100%, 98% like Moses and Jesus was and like Jesus 30% was, like Jesus, Moses. Right? Uh, yeah. that, that, that's not really relevant. 
the, the point that is being made here in verse 16 is that like Moses is what they asked, what Israel asked. Like Moses? No, yeah, yes. but what, no, they didn't ask like Moses. They yeah. asked yeah. that Moses would speak to God for them. Right. And that he would speak directly to God yes. rather than God speaking directly to them. Okay. So when it says like Moses, the context So this is exactly is what happened clear. with Muhammad. No, Muhammad spoke number one to the angel Gabriel. Right. And also the Qurans were, the revelations no, were no, revealed. No, we, we know Muhammad. Him. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. And things like you're that. mistaken about that. Muhammad did speak to God when directly. When I read Ahmed did that, he was very clear that he's uh, the uh, well, Let me clarify something. Uh, Christians, our brothers around the world, they have to move on from Ahmed Didat. Sheikh Ahmad Idat did what he did and we appreciate his work but he wasn't he wasn't infallible. We don't follow him in everything. We do agree we do, do agree with a lot of things he did and said. We don't agree with a lot of what he he, he said, right? But, so let's move on from Sheikh Ahmad Idat. Our Christian so brothers around the world. Me, how did yeah. God not just let, some, let me explain some one time but the general way in which God Just like I just like Muhammad I allow just like I allowed you to explain. Let me explain now. Okay. Okay. Now Muhammad peace be upon him, did speak to God uh, God directly when he went on the night journey, Mi'raj, he had a conversation with God. We, we have been told in prophetic tradition, Do you know what and it is, it's, uh, we have reports and de the details are there. Five daily prayers were made obligatory directly by God himself and given to Muhammad. Okay, and there was the, the, the debate, the debate is about whether Muhammad, peace be upon him, saw God directly without any curtains or any any barriers between okay. right or he spoke to God with his with, but he did speak to God okay, okay. So, he spoke so, to God so, so that's fulfilled but is that the, okay no 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 I all I have to I all I have to show is he spoke to God no that's not correct okay it's not correct so the passage is very clear that God began to speak to Israel by giving the Ten Commandments okay by giving his voice from heaven and the people said to stop and they wanted from then on the revelation to come by Moses speaking directly to God and then bringing that message to them. Okay. Now, it may be, according to the Islamic tradition, that one time Muhammad spoke to God directly. That's not the point. The point is the revelation that is revealed, all the revelation that Moses revealed, came from him directly communicating with God. Okay. Muhammad, you cannot say that generally... So, he, so, you, so, so are you saying angels, to the rule. angels had no, no, no role just with Moses? Please. What you're saying... Are you saying angels never came to Moses? No, let's let me just clarify what you're. No, no, saying. I, I, because I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm the, turning. The I'm turning your argument. I'm turning your yeah. argument around the other yeah, way. But I just want to clarify. If, if I, no, 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 I'm not talking no, to you. No, I'm no, not no, talking no, to you. No, sorry, 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 no, sorry. It doesn't need your help. If angel did not come to Moses, no, 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 wait, wait. Then why you are exaggerating? Exaggerating. Okay. Can you? Can you? Can you? Am I talking to you, sir? Am I talking to you? Angel did not come Does he to need Moses. your help? Why you are exaggerating? Does he need your help? Why? Does he need your help? Does he need your help? Does this he need your help? Speaker's corner. He's, do, he's doing this a is speaker's <laughs> corner, and so everybody wow. has a right to speak. Okay, okay. If you, we'll continue with our discussion. You, okay, we'll ignore him. Right, we'll ignore right, him. Right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's not. He's, he's being indecent, and we'll continue with our decent discussion. So, um, with regards to this question, if I can show you that Moses had had interaction with the angels then your point, your argument falls on his face. No, not because, really. Because then both can be showed that there were, there were times when Muhammad spoke to God and there were times when he didn't speak to God directly. Likewise, there were times when Moses speak, spoke to God and there were times when he didn't speak to God uh, directly. So, what, what does that show us? That your, your argument, your criteria cannot be used as a rule of thumb in this case. What can be used as a rule of thumb are the indications or are the... Uh, are the, the, the conditions given by God. What is the condition? One condition or a few conditions actually. Can we, we're moving, uh, I let let me come. On. I don't want to move on from this point. Uh, no, though. why not? Because, because conditions. We haven't finished, I want to respond to what you I, I have responded to your point already. Okay, so can I respond to, yeah, to that point? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, um, he was not squeezed by Moses. He, was, yeah. he wasn't. He wasn't squeezed three times. I'm sorry, I just... and sorry, even man. Moses was Thanks, able man. to read and write. So, um, yeah, so what I'm trying to say, with the, when you read that passage, um, there may have been an occasion, according to the Islamic tradition, that Muhammad spoke directly to God, right? I, I don't agree with that, but it's in your tradition, right? But as a general oh, no, no, rule... You, of course you don't agree with... Yeah, of course, yeah. All of but it. But as a general but rule... You don't agree with anything we yeah, have. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. But as a general rule, <coughs> yeah, yeah. The, the manner in which God communicated his revelation was not by Muhammad speaking directly to God. Okay. Whereas, let me just finish, just to give you the opposite. Yeah. Whereas with Moses... 
there may be have been occasions where he may have um, spoken to angels or whatever, but the majority, the general rule of him receiving his revelation was that he received it directly from God. That's only with the Ten Commandments. The, That's only with the, the Ten Commandments. No, the Ten Commandments were given by God. So Torah, to Torah was entirely given directly by God. Do you show me in the Bible? Well, show me in the Bible the well, Torah, yeah. five books, or whatever they contain, was given directly I've, I've by just, God. I've just shown you. No, Ten passage, Commandments, I agree. Ten Commandments, just, just like Muhammad, just like Muhammad was given certain commandments by God, obligation of prayer, right, directly by God. Torah was given directly by God yeah. to Moses. Yeah. Was was the law in its entirety given by God directly? I think or, so, yeah. Show me I, I the think, evidence. I, no, what I'm trying the to say, evidence, please. Sorry, let me take that back. What okay. I'm trying to say is okay. that as a okay. general rule, yes. the, the revelation now you're imposing Moses rules. Received, yes. Yeah, as, a, as I'm talking about a general rule, because right. this is the, the, the general characterization of Moses, okay. according to that passage, to be like Moses okay. is to be one who speaks directly to God okay. and receives now, now, clearly, we don't agree. Right. Well, so let's let's move on. Passage. Let's let's move on. Passage. Let's move on to the conditions now. Okay. okay. So let's go. So to let me show you. Let me show you. Okay. Listen, so, right, listen, made your point, listen. Made my are these Christian manners? Are these in the burning bush? Are these Christian manners? Are these Christian manners? Are these Christian manners? Are these Christian manners? Okay. Are these Christian manners? Moses received the revelation in the burning bush. Are these Christian manners? In the burning bush and special name of God. Thanks. A name of God. Thank you. I think that manners. Uh, okay. Um, so the next condition would be a prophet like thee. That's the first one. Yeah, right? let's talk about the it next, very quickly. The, the, well, we've just both given our opinion on that, right? We can yeah. move on from that. Yeah, yeah, Otherwise absolutely. We'll be here. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. the next point is from the midst of thee. Okay. From the midst of thee. Okay. Who's he now, speaking to? Okay. He is speaking to the Israelites. So here. from the midst of the Israelites. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, what's the Hebrew for that? Are you aware of the yeah, Hebrew? Yeah, the Hebrew term? word is kereb, I think. Okay. Uh, the kereb, which means in your midst, means or it actually can refer to your inner no, parts. No, 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 no. If I'm wrong, Ke I just go. Kereb, kereb means uh, close to you. Okay. It the same word. The inner... same word is in Arabic. Karib. Karib means someone close to you. Someone close to you. So again, I will translations. Pull up the word. Okay, I will please do. Pull up the word. And so you've already given me the word. I will literally pull up the Hebrew. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. So we go to um, okay. Hebrew. Because a lot of the biblical translations are theologically driven. These translations, just no, like many I'm, translations I'm of the Quran, the for you. I'm, I'm being consistent. I'm just like many Hebrew translations of the Quran, so they from are. From your midst. Yeah. We'll click on it. From your midst. Yeah. The Hebrew word. It's uh, kerba. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. It's, it's kerba. Me, let me okay. just bear with me. Yeah. So let's click on this. Okay. In the Arabic, Arabic, in the Arabic word. language, we have the same word for closeness of relations. Okay, Koraba. Okay, or Akra, uh, so yeah. the definition. I'm of sorry, Kerab, not Koraba, Akraba. The yeah. de definition of Kerab is midst or inward parts. It can it refers even to your inner organs. Okay. Okay. Right? So when he says okay. in the midst of thee, he's talking to the Israelites and he's saying the prophet will come from in your midst. Okay. No, no. That okay. Inner parts. Uh, and other um, uh, meanings. Can you read other meanings? Among body. Uh, wait, 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 Inward parts of the human body. Okay. So the okay. context, the, 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 okay. the, the, the real way, meaning is within you. Okay. Within you, the, the words that he's speaking are, are, to. Are you aware that uh, Arabic and uh, Hebrew are sister yeah, languages? Well, honestly, I'm just going to yeah. go by a dictionary. I'm not going to go by Arabic okay. or your knowledge. Okay, of I can get uh, get out another dictionary and show you. Okay, show that, me a dictionary that, that, that gives that, that word the, the, the term karib, karib or kerb. Well, that's Arabic you're talking about. No, no, no. You're committing the phonic fallacy. I think that happened to you in the No, no, no. I'm not. I am not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not committing that fallacy because I. Know for a fact. The word Allah in Hebrew is an oak tree. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's anyway, not. Anyway, I don't know. No, because the, the, word, the, the word Allah, the, the word Allah comes from Elohim and Elahi, same term what? used by biblical yeah. personalities. Yeah. Elahim, El, El and Elohim. Yeah, no, El, yeah. Elahi, Elahi. Allah is Al Elaha. Allah, yeah. the term Allah right. is Al Elaha. Elaha is the word used by allegedly Jesus on the cross. Uh, so it's a general word for God. It can mean like. Exactly. So and when, when some God, Christians right? claim that it's moon god or da 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 da, the, you the, should the you word should. the word El or Theos or whatever okay. can be any now, god. Now, 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 midst, 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 
the, the term midst there, okay, can be argued uh, or can be debated, right? When we go further... From Hebrew. From, no, ab Arabic. Abs absolutely, I, I stand by my point. Karib. I'm saying Karib, Karib is actually Karib in Arabic, okay? Yeah, Karib mean means close. Mean in, in Arabic, it means close. Okay, if any, if you ask any student of Arabic, means uh, parts, okay. No, inner, the problem is, the problem is, uh, do you know Semitic languages? No, but I know other. Okay, I know one of them. I know one of them. Uh, I mean, relatively, I know it relatively uh, well. Uh, I'm, I'm not an expert in the Arabic language. Okay, uh, but I'm a student of the language. Well, I'm I have to study it. Okay. So, two dictionaries we, we, that we can, we can, if, if, if you, you can want, come up with a dictionary. Yeah, I, I will get it for and, you. And, and a Hebrew dictionary, not Arabic. Okay. Yes, I will. I will. If we go to uh, this uh, dictionary, this Gisenius. Is, but let's say is it Gisenius? Is it Gisenius? Which, which, which one? I'm doing Strong's and also uh, Brown's Driver Briggs. But let's okay. say hypothetically that's correct. Okay. Let's say hypothetically. So, so, so now, we, we move on. Hypothetically, if that definition is correct, that means it has if, to come if from. If we Islam. keep moving on, you will see why we insist that this refers to a prophet. Okay, we'll move to the next one. Yeah, yeah. Point, okay, right? so we've so, done we've done a prophet like Moses. We've both given yes, our opinion. We've yes, done in your midst. Yes, we've both given our opinion. Yeah, okay, yeah. The next one. Next one is. <coughs> let me just pull it up again. The next one is from your brethren. Yeah. Okay. Of thy brethren. Yes. So you see, we we of thy brethren. Okay. Now brethren here can mean Israelites, no doubt. Number one. Okay, I believe hundred percent brethren can mean Israelites, and predominantly in the Bible, it means the Israelites. I'm being more honest than 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 you probably expect, okay. right? Yeah, yeah, okay, sure. yeah, and yeah. and I'm not saying that you 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 would expect any worse from me because yeah, we've never had interaction before, right? Yeah. So I, I like to be as upright as possible yeah, sure, uh, in me these too, discussions. Okay, well. right. Unless I'm so, really pressed. But <laughs> exceptionally, exceptionally, the term has been used for non-Israelites. Okay. Yeah. But Edomites, for example, who were Arabs. The same term in the Bible has been used for brethren. Well, the word right? just means brother, so it can be used of um, any any. And this right? is where this so is. Jacob and Esau were brothers. Okay, this is where I take you back to the term karib, okay, or karib, which means people who are close, right? For example, I'll give you an example very quickly. In the Quran, we have a verse. It doesn't mean that. We've gone to no, the no, no, no. Let me let, let me quickly that. explain. Let me quickly explain why. Yeah, I'm, I don't want to let you get away with saying it means something without getting. But let me explain, and you can disagree with me. No problem. Okay. In the Quran, we have a verse where it talks about people who uh, are to be revered or who are to be taken care of. Uh, who or, or there's a hierarchy of respect and attention in the Quran. For example, wait, 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 wait. I'll, let me finish my point yeah. and you will see where I'm coming from. Okay. Semitic languages usually, um, you know, when they have the same words differently pronounced in those three uh, Semitic languages, they usually mean the same thing. Okay. They usually mean the same well, thing. Okay. Yeah, I disagree they, with they, that. They, they, I they, just want to go and, by the And Semitic definition. languages, let me explain very quickly again. Semitic languages are, are very rich languages. A word can be used in different places or different contexts uh, for different meanings, for example. Let me quickly give you an example here. In the Quran, this verse, it states, you know, that you are to worship Allah and then وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانَ وَالْيَتَامَ Sorry, وَذِلْ قُرْبَى Okay, وَذِلْ قُرْبَى Okay. <laughs> But so. you have to be patient because yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a discussion about yeah. languages, right? Dil Qurba in Arabic can mean your close relatives or your relatives, generally, your relatives, but right? We're not talking okay. about Arabic. Okay. We're talking about Hebrew. Right. The Hebrew word is clearly referring to your inward parts, the word in your midst. Okay. It's Kereb in Hebrew, which means you, your, you are insisting, your inner you, okay, you, you are insisting that it means that. I am saying it, it, it has a wider mean meaning. I, I'm saying it has a wider meaning. You've not shown me any authority. I will. For I will. That. I, I, not I, I, my, okay. I, want in, I want Hebrew. Okay. Okay. Let me Google it. Can someone Google for me quickly? Uh, the Hebrew word for relatives. Hebrew word for relatives. Relatives. Okay. We will see. We will get to it right now. Okay. Let's let's establish this before we go. Hebrew word for relatives. And we will see. What is it? Uh, Can you see a transliteration? Go, go, go back up. My English dictionary, try that. 
Sorry? No, relatives, generally, relatives, not specifically, not mother or not father, uh, relatives. But relatives is going to be brother, brother and again. No, 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 that's brothers. That's the, there is a, there is, there is, there is, a, there is a specific word, there is a specific word for that in Hebrew, akha, okay, uh, which is very similar to the Arabic language, akhi, akhun, okay. So, I just in, think, what's the dictionary definition? You know, what's the dictionary? Say? The problem is in dictionaries. When you go to dictionaries, what is the word? Karom. There you go. But where did you get that from? Okay, that's, anyway, that's, this is probably where? literally. So yeah, yeah. yeah but, but all the words in Hebrew refer okay. to kinsmen. What's this kinsmen, who are they? kinsmen, right? I, I want, yeah. I want okay, know, relative. I want okay. Okay. No, no, no. Wait, wait. Look, we. The there was no website. plan. This, this is not a conspiracy. Yeah, it's a yeah, Jewish website. Okay. okay, I don't even know what that is. Okay, so so this is not. This is clearly not a conspiracy. This is not. This is. Okay, no, no. Pull that out again, please. Now you gave me a dictionary. Yeah, I gave you. Okay, okay. I am giving you. This is my claim. What was my claim? My claim was the term Koreb or Kareb or Karib has wider meaning. You can't just. Uh, put one meaning to it and say that's the only meaning this word has. Semitic languages do not work like that. No, this is what it, you have to it understand. Does have other meanings, inward no. parts, your, your no. trail, But what about your, relatives? Your, 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 is that one of the meanings? No, it's not okay. a dictionary. Not unless so you, it's your should, should, you don't accept that. You yeah, don't. No, have, I don't accept that. Not you, unless it's okay. A okay. 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 We, we'll leave stories. it for the people now listening yeah, to us. They need to go and do their research and see whether relatives is one of the meanings of koreb. And in in the Hebrew the language, we can move on to the next part now. Right, right. I've made my point that these terms, a lot of the words in Semitic languages have wider meanings. You can't just pin them down. Um, you can't just pin them down and claim only one meaning. Okay, um, and, and, and the I meaning that, that may help you. Many, if yeah, okay. I can do a speech as well. Can like, do a speech as well? Uh, no, I haven't so, done a speech. Yeah, you were just talking to the camera. But, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> right. So the word kerem can have many meanings. It can yes. Have, um, thank you. Meanings of inward parts, like the entrails. Absolutely. Like that. Absolutely. That's what it, All the things you read. Meaning. Yes. So it, it's talking about in your midst. You know, within you. It can but mean within is, a group of people. The question is: Is you, one of the meanings relatives? That, that is no. The meaning is not relatives. No. Okay, we will not move on until we find, uh, we establish this. We will not move on until we establish, until we show our friend here that relatives is one of the meanings of Koreb in the Hebrew language. And if that's the and case, then, then you will, then will, dictionary. okay, then will you admit that your, yeah, look, your you argument, show me from a dictionary, we yeah, can, we okay, can, okay, yeah. okay, okay, I mean, I'll have to find uh, something very being wrong. I just want to be No, because wrong these, these discussions are very important. There are people watching out there yeah. uh, and they need, they deserve, the, 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 the best knowledge that, that is available out there. A, a Hebrew dictionary that can apply uh, that word. Okay, so can you can you give me give me give me that? Uh, relatives, then we can, we can, accept that. can you check Jesenius? Jesenius was a Hebrew dictionary. Okay, Jesenius. Jesenius. G E S E N I S. I think. Oh, N I U S. G E S S E N I U S. I think so. That's the senior Hebrew dictionary. Yeah, there you go. Hebrew grammar. Okay. Um, I hope you can find the word Koreb. Okay. Oh, just put spelling Koreb. Uh, Hebrew trans. Okay. I think it's going to take someone to work. <laughs> I'm claiming that one of the meanings of Koreb is relative. Okay, you, you and, and, and if that's true, tell you if what. that's true, your argument crumbles. Okay, your argument. Crumbles. This is why we move on to the next point. Yeah, but let's just clarify. So if we and leave it, I think leave it to dictionary yeah. out there that says it. Great, you won your point. If there isn't, you've lost. The point. Okay, let's. Okay, okay. And, and I, I'm isn't. so confident. I'm so yeah. confident. I will let people do their research. Okay, so would you be yeah. so confident to say that if the word kerem does not mean relatives, yeah. but it means in your midst or in your inner part? No, those those are me those are that, meanings. Those. Yeah, but, but if there is no other meaning than that, or, and your meaning is not then my, would you my, accept my, your argument? My, then my argument. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, right, my, 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 then, then. then I'm saying that that meaning is there, and if it's there, then people can actually look at let it. Look at it. Q O R E B. And what's the name of the dictionary that you suggested? I, I'm, I, I don't know what's, uh, what the meaning of Koreb is in Jesenius. I want to check what Jesenius okay. says on, on this, anyway. right? But uh, have you found any meaning of Koreb? If you put Koreb, for example, uh, Q O R E B, meaning meaning of Koreb. 
Um, Let the listeners know what you want. Okay. Ready. Because to find uh, meaning the words on, on, need on the people need to do research anyway yeah, rather absolutely. than just listen to... Now, to next point is brethren. Okay. In the Hebrew language, what's the word there? I want you to read the word. And we're going to use the same method to reach the meaning of that particular word. Okay, brethren. What's the Hebrew word there for brethren? Uh, I think I word. We're going on, for, you know, we're going on for too long to address a very simple and straightforward matter. But if we have to go through this exercise, no problem. Okay, so now the, it's the word ach. 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 Okay. As I said to you earlier, that brother definition, brother. Same word in the Arabic language. Countryman. Okay, yeah. brother, fellow, countryman. Fellow countryman, which is why the NIV translated it fellow Israel. Okay, okay, and continue. What else? Uh, it's got. Um, you want me to read them all out? Um, yeah, please. Alike, another brethren, brother, brother with his brothers, brothers, brotherhood, brothers, brothers, <laughs> companions. Countrymen, 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 fellow, fellow countrymen, fellow countrymen, fellows, kinsmen, kinsmen, nephew, other relative, relatives. There you go. All these meanings, every single one of them supports my point. I'm saying, are the first, first question, are the Arabs directly related to the Israelites? Uh, well, um, Ishmael was um, Isaac's uh, brother. Therefore, and he was Jacob's uncle. Therefore, so he was uh, a relative. Um, yeah, he was a, relative, okay. a distant relative. Okay. It was actually, now, the, and I think as well, when you look in the context, you've got the twelve tribes. We have to also remember that a valid. Option absolutely. Is I, that it's one of the twelve we're, we're tribes? We're not talking about them yet, because my point is not about them. My point, I'm claiming yeah, so you're, that you're brethren point. here refers to the Arabs. Okay. I'm claiming that. Yeah, I'm okay. claiming. You're not. You're not accepting yeah. that, yeah. right? So, you're saying uh, it, 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 why, it. Why do you say the Arabs? Where did you get the Arabs? Uh, the children of Ishmael. So, so what makes you think they're children of Ishmael? The Arabs? Yeah. Because Ishmael was in Paran. Paran is Arabia. According to the Bible, Paran okay, is for, Arabia. No, Paran, I don't think uh, Paran is Arabia. I think Paran, I'll show it to you from the Bible. Yeah, show me. Okay? Yeah, show me. Okay. First, do you accept that Ishmael was in Paran? Uh, I th I'd have to have a look, but... Um, Genesis 20, 21. Uh, sorry, 21. Chapter because 21. I think, I think there's a whole bunch of scholarship okay. on whether or not the Ishmael... Uh, sorry, whether no, no, or not first, the first, let, actually, first... Um, first, let Israelites. us establish. First, let us establish where Ishmael is. There were lots of people. The Jews okay. were in Paran, right? The Jews were in Paran. You had Christians in Paran. You had lots of people in Paran, right? Okay. It was so close to Africa. I'm saying Ishmael was in Paran. There. You had heaps of people. There. Okay, no problem. But I'm, we're talking about Arabs, right? Right? Yeah, but what makes you think the Arabs, just because the Arabs are in Paran, 600 years after Jesus, which is over a thousand no, no, no. years no, no, after no. Ishmael? Arabs, Arabs. I mean, Ishmael is what? Wait, wait. Ishmael I, is are you aware of? Thousand, two I, and a half thousand years I, I, before. Are you Muhammad. aware of? Are you those? aware of archaeology of Arabia? Are you aware of it? Not a lot, no. Okay. I know a little bit. The Arabs, and the Arabs are there on Babylonian inscriptions. Okay, no, yeah, but okay. No, this I, is I, we're I talking about eighth century BC bit. before Christ. Yeah, but the Babylonians right? actually refer to them as a mix of people from my, my memory of my study. Okay. And that they no, 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 no. Babylonians of a hodgepodge. Okay, show me. Show me where the Babylonians are. Honestly, I don't know. Top my head, you'd have to. What we do have from Babylon. Babylonian inscriptions and Assyrian Assyrian inscriptions that the Arabs were seen as bandits, right? Robbers, yeah, people. Okay. Well, hang and does it say Arabs? It it shows Arabs. It shows show in that. inscriptions. Yeah, but you'd have to okay. show me where it uses the term. Arabs. Google Babylonian uh, inscriptions of Arabs. I will see right now. You will see Arabs yeah, I want you sitting to on every camels. Point. I'm not going to give okay, you reading. Okay, and all scholars are unanimous. This is a depiction of. So. I've, read, I've read arguments that that there really was no certain. There is look that really Arabness from what you, I've you, read on you, scholarship. You have an attitude. You have an attitude. Islam I, I, began. I can see you have an attitude that anything I may present, you will not accept it. Well, I want okay. you to prove it. Uh, I will prove it, but yeah. if I cannot prove something to you because you don't want to accept anything I, I'm trying to prove, how can I prove it? Well, you, you would have to if, show me some pe evidence. Because people out there, they have to have this attitude of acceptance that, okay, if something is making sense, it's reasonable, okay, let's but accept it. I just it. want some evidence okay. of what you're saying. Yes, absolutely. I don't just, I don't I'm saying the Arabs were there before Christ. Age seven. You, I mean, so we you have. You can refer to the Arab. You can have inscriptions that refer to the Arabs okay. as a people group, as a united people group, okay. descended from Ishmael. Okay. Now let You've me give you. Let me. Let, okay. Let, let's talk about the evidence. Let because me. Let me give you the blow. Let me give you the blow. Uh, 
you will not be able to respond to. Okay. Open the Bible, please. <laughs> when was Isaiah revealed? About 700 years before Christ. Okay. When was I saying the Babylonian inscriptions come from? Uh, Assyrians, 8th century BC. I think, I think you were saying Babylonians, but I, think I said, you meant Assyrians. No, Assyrians and Babylonians. Okay. Yeah. 8th century BC. Assyrians. I'm talking about Assyrians. 8th century BC. And Isaiah was revealed. About 700. Uh, same time, BC, yeah. approximately, approximately. Yeah. Book of Isaiah, yeah. chapter 21. Verse 13. And it says Arabs, doesn't it? We will see. So and what, read it loud, what, what please. Verse? Oh, verse 13. Isaiah 21, verse 13. 13. Okay, so read it. No, says, no, no, read it, read yeah, it. read it to you. Yeah. A, a prophecy against Arabia. Thank you. Stop right. there now. So Isaiah let's just was look at that word. Let's look at that word, Hebrew word, Arabia. Okay, good. A prophecy about Arabia in the book of Isaiah, which was revealed in the 8th century BC sometime uh, uh, on the prophet Isaiah. Same time I'm talking about when the Assyrians had inscriptions about Arabs. Okay. My friend challenged me on that. I have given him evidence from the Bible that the Arabs are mentioned at that time in the Bible. Okay, so the, the Arabs are the people I mentioned there in the Bible. Thank yeah. you, okay. thank you. So now you, you, you where, accept, where can you they, accept, can you, before they, we move on, can you accept that you were clearly mistaken on that? Yeah, perhaps I was mistaken, yeah. Okay, now let's move on. Okay, so the Arabs are ancient and they are yes, seen as like a bird. Okay, right. now keep reading this very passage. This passage will prove my point to you that Ishmael was in Arabia. Keep reading this, this passage. I will prove to you that this prophecy clearly refers to Muhammad. Not only this, even Deuteronomy 33, 2 and Isaiah 42, the entire chapter is talking about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But those, okay. I mean, prophecy if we're spending against, so much time on this. This is the prophecy against the Arabs. Okay. A prophecy against Arabia. Yes. Your and what's the prophecy? Your caravans, sorry, you caravans of Dedanites who camped in the thickets of Arabia Bring water for the thirsty. You who live in Tamar, bring food for the fugitives. They flee from the sword, from the drawn sword, from the bent bow, and from the heat of battle. I think what it's saying is that. Keep, keep, keep going, keep going. Yeah. I want to I wanna lead to a point. Okay, this is what the Lord. But let's just clarify what this is saying so far, right? So no, no, we're, we're not discussing that, that prophecy yet. Okay, That's a prophecy for Islam, by the way, but we'll continue. Continue. We'll talk, talk about okay. it another time. Right, so I'm trying to lead to a point. This yeah. is what the Lord says to me. Within one year, as a servant bound by contract would count it, all the splendor of Kedar will come to an end. Okay. Kedar, that's uh, Petra. Uh, no, 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 that's not Petra. The, uh, Wait. Yeah, it is. When you click on it, it talks about the cleft of the rocks. That's, that's clearly Petra. Okay. Now, right. I mean, do you, are you sure you want to go into that? Yeah, because we can, we're, we're going to spend another half an hour and then we're going to come around yeah, half an hour later and you're going to say, you know what? You, you were right. You, so, get, you get so, one so, point wrong. Right. Okay. You get one point wrong. No, 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 right I don't. I humbly admit I, it. And no, you think no, that, no. That I'm, every point no. Is wrong. Petra, Petra was built by Nabataeans. Yeah. Are you aware of that? Yeah. And who were the Nabataeans? Let's have a look. Kida. No, no, no. Wait. So are, you, are you aware that, that 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 Petra was built by Nabataeans? Look, I'm not sure. No, I'm I not am. Sure. I, can't, I am. I can't, yeah, I you am. have to give me a source okay. for it. Okay. 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 Hey, come on. What's your point? Let's just go. Let's, 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 let's let you make your point. If we stick to our points, then let's we can make some point. progress. Okay. Kedar is in Arabia. Do you agree? According to the book of yeah, Isaiah. It seems to be on the face value of this passage oh. that it's talking about uh, Kedar Se in Arabia. Seems to be. Are you sure? Seems to be. You just said seems to yeah, be. Yeah. Well, it mentions Kedar, but it doesn't tell us where Kedar is, right? So uh, well, it's a prophecy about that. Arabia. Yeah, but we're not told exactly why, where well, Arabia no, no. Why is. is the Bible talking about Kedar in Arabia? Well, it's talking about them being judged. Okay, and who, who, where are they? According to this particular passage, so, where do you think Kedar is? So Kedar seems to be in Arabia. Okay, that's good. Who is Kedar now? Do you know who Kedar is? It, it's the Ishmaelites, yeah. No, no. Who is he? Oh, Kedar himself. Oh, yes. look, I'm not familiar with that. Okay, tell me. let's go to uh, uh, Genesis 25, 13. Let's go. So you're going to go by the name of a city. No, 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 no. Don't, don't a, jump the gun. Please just, 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 just help me to, so that we can finish this very quickly. Okay, Genesis 25, 13. I'll tell you who Kedar is. 
Are these the uh, sons of Abraham, right? Okay. Uh, which these verse? are the sons of Ishmael. Oh, okay, right. That's good. Okay. What verse is it? 13. There, in front of you. There, yes. Okay, so they're Arabian, right? No, no, no. Yeah, these are the names of the sons of Ishmael. You're saying that. And what are the names? Okay, and probably Kedar. That's probably what No, no. <laughs> Can you read the verses? It's oh, like you were reading at your, oh, for, for okay. yourself. These yeah. are the names of the sons of Ishmael listed in the order of their birth. Uh, honestly, you want to pronounce them? Nevajoth, number one. Kedar. Then Kedar? Adbi Sorry. Kedar is there, number oh, there, two. Yeah, number yeah. two, okay. Yeah. And there are many more, okay. Yeah. Twelve sons. Yeah, okay, point. now, yeah. now, Kedar is in Arabia. We have already established that. Yeah, since we are sitting in Arabia. And he is the second son of Ismail. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so where do you think Ismail was? In Arabia. Thank you. That's but, that's but, my point. But, okay, okay. Now, 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 now. Okay, okay. Now, okay. We, we're, now you're jumping to all together another point. Remember, you made a claim that how do we know Ismail was in Arabia? Or Arabs are the children of Ismail, yeah. right? Yeah, no, I've just shown you. Point. I've just shown you yeah. that. Uh, so this is the second point you have been corrected on. Agreed? Well, no. I, I was ha happy to accept that. As no, 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 you it, no, no, you challenged no, me. You when I said the Arabs were well, generally speaking, yeah. uh, the period we are addressing. 7th century BC before Christ, yeah. right? The Arabs were the children yeah. of, yeah. generally speaking, yeah, not all Arabs, of yeah. course, because they were outskirts, but these Arabs we are talking about in particular, yeah. Kedar in particular, in it's just children, they are in Arabia. Yeah. It's my, you know so Paran, well Paran, so, so, so no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Paran is Arabia. This is the point I'm trying to make, yeah. uh, highlight, sure. because according to the uh, book of Genesis, chapter 21, Verses 17 onwards, Ishmael was left in Paran, Paran by his father. Yeah. And then he had children. He got married in Arabia, he had children, and then 12 sons. Kedar is clearly in Arabia because his children are in Arabia, according to the book of Isaiah, chapter 21, 13, yeah. a prophecy regarding Arabia. So this is very clear now. This is why we connect Deuteronomy 33, 2, to this prophecy in Deuteronomy 18:18. Why? Because that prophecy says, Lord came from Sinai. He, ro he, 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 he rose from Mount Sire and he shone forth from Mount Paran. Three locations. Yeah, but that, that Let me finish. Let me finish, please. Let me finish. That it's particular a, prophecy. Wait, I've man. Let you talk wait. For ages, man. I'm finishing right now. Point. I'm finishing okay, right now. Finish, right. Okay. It mentions Deuteronomy 33, 2 mentions three locations. Sinai, yeah. Moses. It's yeah. connected to Moses. Sire. Sire or Sa'ir yeah, in the Arabic uh, mountain range in Palestine. Paran is Arabia. So three individuals. You do definitely accept Moses from Sinai. You accept it's not Jesus. Three individuals. Let's uh, have a look three at locations, I said. Yeah, three, three locations. locations. Three locations these connected. Are the locations that Israel traveled in the Exodus. Okay, wait. I am saying these are three locations, right? Yeah. Distinct locations. Yeah. And they are connected to three distinct personalities. No. no. Okay. No. Okay. They are the places that Israel traveled through the wilderness. Okay. So what's happening but, in Paran? But, he's he's shown he's shown he's shown Paran forth he's shown forth from Paran. Paran is Arabia, and he came with ten thousand saints. So what happened in Paran? What so happened? Given your how did Lord how did Lord shone forth from Paran from Arabia? What happened in Arabia? Well, because Israel moved through there. Yeah, if the people of Israel moved through so there. So why is Lord shining forth? Like, I mean. When you read the verse, because, it, because it says that he rose. Let's have a look at the verse. Okay, yeah, look at the verse, please. What is it? Genesis. Deuteronomy 33 2. What the verse is saying, there is, and then once and you there the is, brethren, I want to there is a point gradual point. elevation of the Lord, so to say, yeah, in the biblical language, that it starts from Sinai, it goes further up in Sair, and it reaches its peak in Paran. It reaches its peak in Arabia. So what happened in Arabia? Okay. Read. So let's read this passage. Yes, please, right? please. This is the blessing that Moses, the man of God, pronounced on the Israelites before his death. Okay. He said, the Lord came from Sinai. You're reading the... Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. dawned over them from Seir. Okay. He shone forth from Mount Paran. Yes. He came with myriads of holy ones okay. from the south, from his mountain slope. Surely it is you who love the people. All the holy ones are in your hand. At your feet they all bow down. Etc. Etc. The law that Moses gave us, the possession of the assembly of Jacob, he was king over Jeshuram, Je Jeshuram, when the leaders of the people assembled. Do you want to keep going, or is that what you? Hey, you want? You wanted to read all of okay. that. I, I'm, I'm, so, I'm concerned about one verse. So, so okay. it seems to me here that this is a blessing being pronounced over. Oh, okay. So over in other words, it's a prophecy, right? 
Well, no, it's not a prophecy. Okay. It's actually it's describing what's just happened. Okay, what happened? What's happened is that what happened God in Quran? has delivered, God has brought Israel out of Egypt through all these areas. The, so the place where they are today, we're, we're at the point of this writing, the Jews when never, about to enter to my the knowledge, land. in the time of Moses, never made it to Arabia. Did you know that? They crossed through, they crossed, no. Sinai. Look, they crossed through the Red Sea. Right through okay, that where, area. Where did they go? And, and as well, Arabia, you're thinking down the Moses, bottom where Mecca Moses, is, but Arabia is much higher. It can be all of that. Okay, so Arabia is so higher, you but look, is, you is, Arabia, is, is Mecca Arabia? Is Mecca Arabia? Yeah, I know, but this isn't saying Mecca. It's not saying Mecca. It's just no, saying no. Um, Dedan, I'll tell you, uh, Kida, okay. you know, these places. Okay, wait, wait. I will Let's prove my, I'll prove my point. Wait, wait, I'll prove my point. Wait. Now you're saying Mecca is not Arabia. I'm saying Paran is Mecca. I'm saying that right now. He's standing in front of you. Have you I'm got saying, evidence for that? Yes. You, go Genesis. You want to go to Genesis? Now, Chapter right? 21, verse 17. And then the last point, because I want to make, uh, uh, I want to give course, my argument as of to course, who the brethren Of course, of course. I'm saying Paran is Mecca. The wilderness of Paran, which is being addressed in Deuteronomy 33, 2, this verse, is directly talking about Mecca. So. Genesis so what happened what? in Mecca? Genesis what? 21, chapter 21, verse 17. What's happening to Ishmael? Tell us. So uh, God heard the boy crying. This is when they God were heard the boy crying. Read, read loud so that we can all hear. God heard the boy crying, and yeah. the angel of the Lord called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, "What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying, as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation." Okay, okay. Twenty-one. Sorry, verse twenty-one. Twenty-one. Yeah, yeah. No, no, there, there, there. Yeah. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. Okay. I I want to talk about I want to address the point where it talks about the well the well of water that was that that emerged as a miracle under his feet okay this is what I want to talk about is there in chapter 21 sorry, okay verse 21 no no no, no, no not verse 21 sorry uh, okay yeah then she went from verse 16 then she went off and sat down about a, a bow shot away for she thought I cannot watch the boy die and as she sat there, she began to sob. God heard the boy crying and, and the angel of God called to Hagar. Okay, where is the discussion on the well? Yes, the God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. Verse 19, yeah. same chapter, yeah. Genesis 21, verse 19. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. Why am I mentioning this? Yeah, why are you mentioning it? <laughs> you know, the biggest source of water in the Paran Valley, the Valley of Paran, which is usually called Hijaz. You know where it is? No. The well of Zamzam in Mecca. Right, okay. It hasn't dried. Okay, it hasn't right. dried to this day. So that, that's okay. your argument as to why it's brethren. Yeah, yeah. So, so all, all indicators. Yeah, that, yeah, absolutely. The well of Zamzam, the water that came out for, Ish for Ishmael, for Ishmael, was in the city of Mecca, is in the city of Mecca to this day. So Paran, where Ishmael was left, specifically where the water came out, was the valley of Paran, was a specific point, and that point is Mecca. Okay. So when Lord came from Sinai, rose forth from, uh, uh, you can call them assumptions. I'm saying, if this was about Jesus, I'm saying, if this was about Jesus, the Christians would go to Scandinavia, then to Alaska, then to South America, then to Australia, and then come back to Britain to prove okay. that it was Jesus, right. like you do with all the prophecies yeah. about Jesus, right? Yeah. You use so many so reasons, you so many indicators to prove that it's Jesus. And we're saying directly, these yeah. references are there about Arabia, something's happening in Arabia. The book of Isaiah, the entire chapter 42 is talking about something so happening in Arabia. Another, another no, we're not going to another one. I'm just mentioning you're, you're the side points. Like, I think it's time for me to say yeah. something. Now. Okay. I just want to ask but you a quick why question. Do the question ask you a quick why question. do the Christians forget that, agree, that approach? If you agree that the word brethren can mean the fellow Israelites and the Arabs. Yeah, but you agree, right? Yes. Why would you choose one over the other? Good. Very good just question. A, short answer, a, fair, a summary answer. A fair question. Why? Because what the prophecy says otherwise fits in 
to the context of like Muhammad, what? for what? example. For example, for example, let me give you my quick read, quickly read. Quickly, yeah. So Moses like prophet. Moses like, okay? Prophet. Because it's not talking about Moses like person. Moses yeah, Moses like we've human. Discussed what okay. that means. Yeah, yeah. You asked me, so let me quickly clarify what I mean, yeah? His prophethood would be like Moses. Whatever qualities Moses came with as a prophet, as a messenger, this is what God is talking about, right? Now, no one brought a new law except Muhammad. Even Jesus did not bring a new Torah. Moses came with the Torah, a comprehensive law. Only Muhammad, who came from Arabia, from Paran, brought that comprehensive law. Okay, Muhammad governed as a prophet. So did Moses. He governed his people as a prophet. He implemented law. He punished people. He applied the law of God on his people. Okay, Jesus, no Israelite prophet ever did that after Moses. Okay, I mean, there were few. I mean, I mean, of course, let me let me quickly summarize my point. They did. David, Solomon, Joshua, these people did apply the same law, but the law was the Torah. Okay. Sure. Muhammad came with a new law, a, a, a revision of the law of God, which is foretold okay. again uh, in the book of uh, the reason. I mean, the reason now why I want to give why I think it's talking about. The fellow sure, Islam. please do. And I'll let you talk for as okay. long as you want. Okay, right. Uh, so in, in Isaiah 42, this law is another one. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm trying to give you references as to why we believe because comprehensively yeah, but you've made your point. I think that's, that's a simple last point. point and, and last no. point. Last point. The reason why it is not another Israelite prophet like Moses, even Jesus himself is not like Moses in, in that sense, in the prophetic sense, because the prophecy remained unfulfilled and Jesus himself, so, but... Jesus himself denied being that prophet. Okay, now my turn. Yeah. So now, the, did, you, did you understand the last sentence? Yeah. Jesus no, denied. Deny being that prophet. Okay, now that's the point we need to come back to uh, next time. Yeah. So, next, next, in the next uh, session. Maybe another debate. <laughs> um, so, uh, the reason why I think it's fellow Israelites, first of all, is because within the context, if you look, that Jesus is, uh, sorry, that uh, Moses is talking about the authority of Israel. So, he talks about kings, and he says in chapter 17 that you shall not uh, put a, I'll just read it to you. When it says uh, in uh, chapter 17, just a chapter before, when you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you and have taken possession of it and settled in it, and you say, let us set a king over us, like all the other nations around us, be sure to appoint over you a king the Lord your God chooses. He must be from among your brethren. Do not place a foreigner over you, one who is not an Israelite. So it seems very close here. The context seems to be talking about um, where is this you're reading from? This is chapter 17, okay. um, uh, verse 14. So it's just a chapter okay. before that it's talking about the, the But this brethren, is not connected to the your... brethren. The second reason... I, I, there's no there's no connection here. Well, yeah, because if you look at the overall context, it's talking about the authority within so, Israel. So likewise... Hang on, I didn't cut you off. Yeah, you sure, sure, sure. So um, you had the kings, you have um, the Levites, is also mentioned in chapter 17. Uh, sorry, chapter 18, the same chapter. But the other reason why it's talking about brethren is because, as I said earlier, in the beginning of the debate, it's in your midst, in your inner parts, the word kereb, which is applied... Okay, so give me a prophet like Moses please, then, please. in their so, midst. So, yeah, in their midst. So, when give it says me a prophet like, like Moses. Moses, the point that I made at the beginning, which yeah. you seem to have quickly forgotten about, is like Moses, he's not talking about any old thing like Moses. It's I agree. very specific. Yes. The specific thing is yeah. that it says, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, mm. from your brethren, you must listen to him, for this is what you ask yes. of the Lord your God at Horeb right. okay. on the day the assembly of yes. the assembly, when you said, "Let us not hear the voice of God, or uh, the Lord our God, nor see this great fire anymore, okay. lest we die." So, like Moses, is someone who directly speaks to God okay. directly. And okay. here's his revelation as a general principle, receives that revelation and then imparts that to the people. Okay. Now, you said Muhammad at one time spoke to God, but as a general rule, according to the Islamic tradition, Muhammad did not speak directly to God when he received his revelation, whereas this is saying that Moses neither, did. Neither so, did Moses. Yes, he did. He did not. He did. As a general rule, as a general rule, Moses was always, always speaking to God. Yeah. I, I asked you this question earlier. Yeah. The, the, the entirety of the law, the entirety... He would go up, receive his revelation, and he would share it with the people. Okay. Now, I'll tell you why this prophet is still unfulfilled. 
or this and prophecy? Jesus did that. Jesus spoke directly to God. Okay. Jesus spoke. He came by the Father. No, Jesus he, is God. Said, Jesus yeah, is God. Yeah, the Trinity. So, yeah. so he's, he's not like Moses. Yes, he is. Yeah, no, How is he like, like Moses? Like Moses, it's not any old thing because otherwise he would have to be an Israelite. No, no, but because Jesus, was Jesus is God. Moses was an Israelite. Jesus so, can't. So Jesus can't be. It can't be Muhammad because he wasn't okay. an Israelite. That's okay. the kind of argument you're making. No, right? let me explain so what why. I'm trying to say. I'm is saying Jesus denied being that prophet. Like Moses doesn't mean any old thing okay. like Moses. Let me give you a direct... It refers specifically to the fact that very clear in the context that Moses okay. spoke directly okay. to God for the people. Let, let me give you my argument why... why. Okay, firstly, before I move on to the next point, very quickly, because... I've actually, I've actually got I, no, no, we'll finish soon. I've actually got no, no okay. problem. We'll finish, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we will finish very soon. Um, if I show you that that prophet is not Jesus, if I show you conclusively, that's the that's the condition. Is the door open for Muhammad then? No, it could be Paul. Why not Paul? Because Paul was uh, more. Paul, Paul was Paul spoke a less. To God too. But, no, no. Paul was less of a candidate than Jesus. No. I'll show you why. Well, yeah, well, yeah, I'll show well, you why. I agree. Jesus is the candidate. Thank you. The okay, let's see if Jesus. I, I would easily argue. With so why not Muhammad? What's your problem Muhammad. with Muhammad? Why? What's your problem with Muhammad? Was he? Is what's your issue? Well, because it, what, he uh, what, what if he was truly a prophet of God and foretold in the Bible? What 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 if that is the I case? No reason to believe Muhammad was a prophet. Okay, no problem. You don't have any reasons yet, but if you were shown conclusive reasons, uh, and when we do meet in the future, we will talk about Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42. We'll see whether that fits Muhammad or not. Yeah. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, I am asking if Muhammad turns out to be a very viable option for that prophecy, then what? If, if that's the case, then what? A viable option. Yes. Yeah, if the, I, it, I don't think just because you think that it's possible he could fit the criteria, I don't think that would be... I, I'm saying, saying if if he is. If oh, he if is. If he fits it. Yeah. Well, if he fits it, he fits it, doesn't he? So, that, that, that means he's a true prophet of yeah, God. Well, if he, if okay. If someone fits that prophecy, I'll tell you why Jesus is if, not if, that prophet. If, if it's definitely evidence that, he, that that is that prophecy talking about him. Yes. Right? But I don't think there is. Okay. No problem. Uh, I'll tell you why Jesus is not that prophet. In the Gospel of John, when John the Baptist is baptizing people in the River Jordan, you are aware of it, right? People came and asked him three questions. What were those three questions? Uh, are you Elijah? Are you the prophet? Are you the Messiah? Okay. When they asked him, are you the Elijah? What did he say? No. Uh, he said no, he wasn't Elijah. Okay. Not, not the physical uh, Elijah. Well, according to the book of Matthew, he was the Elijah. According to yeah, Jesus. Yeah, that's because yeah, there's I a confusion Luke, there now. Luke, Luke, okay. um, Luke yeah. actually, um, when the angel Gabriel actually yeah. speaks to um, Zechariah, uh, John the Baptist's father, right. he, Gabriel understands that passage to mean someone coming in the spirit and power of Elijah. Okay. So, so he was right to say no to that, okay. but he was still a fulfillment of that prophecy. Okay. Okay. I, 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 leave, I leave the confusion for you to solve. Okay. Well, Second question, are you, are you the Christ? The Messiah. No, he's, he's, he, said, he said no. That. Who was the Christ? Jesus. But he didn't say Jesus was the Christ directly right then and there. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. I'm saying who was the Christ to you? Uh, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Are you that prophet? That prophet. Yeah. And what were they referring to? Well, probably Deuteronomy 18. Yeah. Not probably. Yeah. Biblical right. scholars. Right. Biblical right. scholars right. are. Right. Uh, right. No, yeah. biblical scholars. Okay, you. good, good. We're in agreement. That means up to that point when. John the Baptist in the first century CE is baptizing people in the River Jordan. The prophecy remains unfulfilled. No, yes. No, no. All, all that means is that the, the, the Jews saw a distinction. The Jews at that time saw a distinction between that prophet and the Messiah. Yes. But, but if we see uh, other passages, I'm pretty sure Peter applies it to Jesus in the book of Acts uh, in his sermon uh, on Pentecost. I have to double check that. But um, Yes, double check it. But, but it does seem to me that okay, just I've... because the Jews thought they were two different people doesn't mean it was necessarily so okay the then, then, then 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 good 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 no problem i am asking now if the jews are wrong about forming a distinction in these three persons mm -hmm. that the elijah is separate to the christ and the christ is separate to that prophet okay they can all they, they're not they no, no, no 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 i am leading to a point i'm leading yeah. point if the jews are wrong in that distinction forming a distinction between these three people why did why did jesus not controvert that why did john the baptist remain was john a prophet of god 
Well, probably because... Like, probably. It, yeah, now, listen, listen to me. Look. No, no, I, John, I John the, the Baptist. Probably. No, no, I wasn't answering your question. I was yeah. answering your first no, question. Right. Said, I thought you were going to be long. No, no, finishing right now. Because you're going to leave Maghrib and leaving. You're going to leave after Maghrib? Okay. Uh, we're just finishing right now and we're going to leave. I'm going to leave with you guys. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to think about that passage you mentioned, by the way. The one in Samuel. You've got a lot of homework to do. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you right? <laughs> okay, so um, the point is, um, yeah. So. If the Jews were wrong in forming that distinction between three persons, if they were wrong, as you are claiming they were wrong, John the Baptist, who is a prophet of God, listening to rubbish, listening to errors and mistakes, his job is to correct them, like Jesus corrected the Jews many times. Yeah, but sometimes, okay? yeah, but sometimes um, Jesus didn't, and John the Baptist perhaps as well, didn't correct people because he knew... So they left them in, 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 in yeah, error? They left them in error. Like, I don't agree with very, that. Very clearly, that's why Jesus... So why was Jesus... So, so why, why was because he correcting them? Because their hearts were already hardened, and he just left them to the hardness But why was heart. he correcting them at, at other times? On lesser important issues? You, you have to show issues. me examples so I can show you why in that situation he corrected when, them. When Jesus... But we know for sure that... Jesus clearly spoke in parables, it says, so that they wouldn't hear because they had already rejected so much. He got to the point where he didn't want them to hear anymore. So are you not aware of any examples of Jesus correcting the Jews? Yeah, yeah. On minor uh, issues? Top of my head, I'm getting a bit tired because I've been here all okay. day. So there are many, many hours, places. So, so this, this was an issue of utmost importance. That prophet, who is that prophet? Who is still? I'll wrap up, yeah? Okay, that's it. I'm done. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Well, I am done. <laughs> <laughs> nice talking to you. I, I, I forgot your name. I'm Caleb. 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 Yeah, Caleb. Yeah. Nice to talk. You, nice to talk to you. Uh, Thank you very I've much. I've seen your debate, so yeah. I do um, appreciate. No worries. No worries. It's my honour. It's my I pleasure. I wouldn't get the honour of chatting with you. So no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 I did, no, no. So that's no, great. I, I, I always like talking to people where I can have a decent discussion, like we did. You spoke. I spoke, and and we leave leave the. Yeah. Leave the judgment to the audience. Yeah. Let them decide. <laughs> All the brothers and sisters out there, Christians and Muslims. And the main issue is, the main point I want to highlight is that you as a Christian, I as a Muslim, we have come together, we've had a decent discussion. We yeah. have shown the world that it can be done. And this is yeah. why I have debates with your scholars and your, you yeah. know, I went to Australia and I had debates with Samuel Green and, uh, yeah, and yeah, Bernie Powers. And I disagreed with them heavily. Yeah. We, had, we, have, we had huge disagreements, yeah. but we were able to hug each other yeah, and walk away. Yeah, I've seen happy. your debates with James White as well. Nice so, talking um, to you. Yeah. Okay, thank cool. you so much Thanks, for your time. No worries. Keep watching and keep coming back and we will have more discussions. Next time we discuss Isaiah 42. Yeah, if you want. Yeah, okay. Yeah.